I'm Daniel. This is Steve. We invent top-notch cocktails for some of the best bars and restaurants in America. When it comes to making drinks, food is our inspiration. And behind every cocktail we make is an adventure. Mexican food is all around us in Los Angeles. There are taco stands on every corner. Mexican markets are everywhere. But no other restaurant serves up classic Oaxacan food quite like Galagetza. I'm going to Galagetza because Brizia asked us to make some cocktails for their new bar. Brizia is a total rock star. She is the Oaxacan princess. We take care of every single detail that we have to take care of. So when people come and sit down and have this meal, for one second they close their eyes and they're like, oh my god, I am back in Oaxaca. We did a tour of the restaurant. We're escorted into the kitchen to see how Galagatza gets ready for the day. In the kitchen, Bricia introduces us to her mother, the woman responsible for Galagatza's famous mola. Each family has their own recipe from Oaxaca. This is the, my grandma's recipe. This mola is, is, is the best. We use this in a special occasion in Oaxaca. This is a Mexican cinnamon, Oaxacan chocolate, and we have also plantains. We need the flavor, you know, the sweet flavors. Mm -hmm. It's using all the vegetables and the herbs and the aromatics of that region. You really feel like you're being transported to that part of the world. I wanted to make a mole cocktail. To do something like that that's, that really is different, to make a savory chocolate cocktail. So it would this start like that and you put it on there? Yeah, yeah. and then it ends like that. And then it ends like yeah. that, right? Yeah, it ends like this. After the kitchen, we, uh, we, we sat down at a table and got straight into the mezcal. <laughs> Mezcal is a cousin to tequila, made from the agave plant. We tasted a number of mezcals, some of them legally imported, some of them illegally imported. What I always look for in a mezcal is that like finished earthy flavor. Like, taste Oaxaca. You can taste exactly, I feel like I'm back there. Because of the way they make mezcal and they roast it underground with stones and wood, you're getting flavors in a, in a liquid that you never normally get. What's, what do we, what's the, what is this, four or five? <laughs> <laughs> All of the moles at Gilligetsu are great. She brought out four moles that are specific to Oaxaca. So these are all different yes. moles. All different ones. The black one gets distinguished because it has chocolate, it has cinnamon. That idea of making chocolate savory and not sweet, it just hit it. It's like, yes, like that's a savory chocolate dish. It's awesome. Clayudas are like a large Oaxacan open face kind of pizza. They make it with all all different types of ingredients. We got a unique one with uh, chapulines. Chapulines are? Like grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. Exactly. What I like about grasshoppers is that it brings texture to any meal. You know that it's wonderful when you bite into something, it's like you get that and the saltiness within. I call it Oaxacan popcorn. Mm -hmm. So, oh my god, yes. Oaxacan popcorn. Oaxacan popcorn. It's definitely weird starting off the day, you know, eating insects. I understand the apprehension that people have with it. If the legs weren't on it, you, it wouldn't be such a big deal. But then, so cute. But then like, you don't eat me. Oh, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Why not eat bugs? That is the better question. It's really tasty. It's salty, spicy. That like lime, citrus. Is it crunchy? It's very crunchy. It's like popcorn. The festival of meats, or the party of meats, that was very impressive. Hello. Whoa. Oh, yikes. Take it all in. Oh, that smells so good. It's amazing. There's new ingredients coming out on every dish. You're tasting a lot of different things. And that's always good to just get your mind going for what you're going to do with cocktails. So my question is, what, how do we cool this down? Horchata is one of those things growing up in Los Angeles that you have all the time. And hers is probably the best in the city. A lot of people use milk in their chata. We don't. Non-dairy. This is non-dairy chata. We just use rice, water, cinnamon, and sugar. What's different about it is that we use a prickly pear puree on top. That's the pinky goodness. It's the yeah. pinky goodness. Prickly pear and the texture of the nuts on top add a lot to it beyond just the flavor. It is it is the sight and the visual. I'm kind of curious to see if like any, if like horchata would be well with like a mezcal. Do you think that would kind of go, or do you? Are you thinking like a different kind of experience. I don't know, let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes great. It does. <laughs> Pouring espadine mezcal into the horchata solidified my suspicion that those two things would work together. I would love to have a mezcal for the cocktail here. 
done. So lunch wraps up. We say our goodbyes to Bricia. So yeah, Daniel and I split up. He stayed in Koreatown, Little Oaxaca. I headed to East Los Angeles, to Boyle Heights. Productos Centroamericanas, frutas, quesos, chorizo. <laughs> you cowboy! You really feel like you're not in Los Angeles and that you're in Mexico doing proper shopping. I'm gonna try and kind of recreate one of the classic Gelaguetza moles. Picked up some of the things that I knew we were gonna need for this horchata. But I wanna make it a little more flavorful than normal, you know? I love going into indigenous markets because that's where you get the real ethnic groceries. And it's also crazy cheap. We picked up panela, kind of Mexican cinnamon. The most important ingredient in the cocktail that I want to do. The cocktail that I'm making is a riff on the horchata that Bricia's family makes. The seasonings and the spices from Oaxaca were really important to her. They're going to be really important to me. So the first ingredient we're going to use, I'm going to add one and a half ounces spice-infused mezcal, two parts of uh, my house-made horchata. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give this a dry shake. We're gonna do this on crushed ice. We're also gonna be able to build this cocktail really high, so visually it looks really nice. Add our mezcal and our horchata base. I'm gonna take some canela here and microplane. We're gonna garnish this. Bricia is kind of the star of Oaxaca. So we're gonna add our star anise here to the front, some of these cloves. So this is the Oaxacan flower. It's a cocktail made from Bricia Lopez at Galaguetza. She's gonna love it. Well, we knew that the cocktails had to include mezcal because that is very close to every Oaxacan's heart. This whole cocktail is based around mole. We create Oaxaca in a glass with mezcal, with chocolate, and with a savory note. It begins with the mole negro combined with some French orange liqueur, a dash of fresh lime, a little bit of agave nectar, and then mezcal because that's Oaxaca. Smells like Oaxaca. Served in a rocks glass. And then topped with Oaxacan chocolate. And then we take some chapulines. Tasty, spicy, fried grasshoppers. I do not believe in non-functional garnishes. This is the dead man Oaxacan. I think people have come to expect a story behind a cocktail. The Dead Man Oaxacan, mm -hmm. which was inspired, obviously, by you know you and your mole. <gasps> with, uh, is that the chocolate that you got from my place? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Dipping the chapulines. So I mean, right? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's that way. What? <laughs> This is delicious. Great. Oh my gosh. It was really inspiring to make something uh, chocolatey, but also savory. Horchata is one of those things that you just drink all the time. It's the most delicious street drink that there is. This is the cocktail that, that I made for you. Oh my gosh. My god. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? Do tell. This is like an like an orchata ice cream almost. But like with two ounces of 90 proof in the scalp. Yeah. <laughs> to Oaxaca. I have to. Yeah. I just cheer with myself too. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Tricia. Oh, thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's the sound that, that I was hoping for. Subscribe to Hungry and feed your food obsession.